I'm Andy Bastable, and I'm the head of water and sanitation at Oxfam. Yeah, and you just come from Haiti now as well. That's right. Yeah, so, so what do you think are the biggest challenges as you see it to sanitation mm. in Haiti? So we start with that. It's still the sustainability. So now that most of the systems are set up either with elevated tanks or with um, deep um, septic tanks, desludging is still needed. So either by hand or by vacuum tug, um, there's a huge bill. It's really, really expensive to actually get the, san uh, get the excreta out. That's one issue. And then the other issue is they still haven't found a proper waste disposal site. Um, so therefore, it's still causing contamination at the current waste site. Um, that's one. I mean, there's been a few kind of good ideas there that I've seen. Um, we Oxfam are trying kind of eco-san and trying to actually collect all the waste and compost it. That's one thing when we're having trouble selling it on. Um, we're working with a group called Soil there who, who are doing that. And um, IOM have been trying um, biogas at one camp. They've thought of biogas. We're yet to see if that will be successful. Um, we've tried in some of the sort of tighter areas where you can't actually desludge and you can't build latrines. We've been trying um, pee poo bags and um, biodigestible um, bags also for composting. Now, that started off well, but then the people decided they'd m much rather have proper latrines like other people, and, and therefore the kind of uptake went down. So there's been some, you know, some new things that have been tried in Haiti, but when you've got 800,000 people still kind of living in camps, needing kind of sanitation support, um, it's a huge job, you know, huge. And what do you see as this is challenges in Haiti similar to the challenges you have seen previously in other places and disasters? I think it's worse. The, the land issues, there's less land available. Uh, many of the landowners said you weren't allowed to dig in, so that's why we had to do raised latrines of some description. Um, it's a very kind of congested, um, densely packed city. So I think the actual challenges in Port-au-Prince are a lot more than what I've seen in the slums in Manila, which was challenging. Um, after the earthquake in, in Pakistan, the current flooding in Pakistan, um, some of the earthquakes in, in Latin America, I think it's one of the most challenging environments for excreta disposal. Mm. And do you see any trends in, in the sustainable sanitation for the future? I think I've seen more th more experimentation of new ideas in Port-au-Prince, possibly because we are at last seeing kind of a bit more attention being paid to sanitation. So there's more players, um, more ideas, people kind of taking a risk with eco-sanitation or biogas or, or, or kind of some sort of poo bags. Um, so I think that's, that's optimistic, but... Um, Still, the problem is enormous there. And what can be done to increase urban preparedness in general, having all these things in mind? Mm, I think a planning around safe disposal would certainly help. I mean, it's very difficult. For, I mean, Port-au-Prince hadn't had an earthquake for 100 years or more, so for them to have planned to be prepared for such a big urban disaster I think would have been very difficult. But because their facilities were so um, weak in the first place, as in they didn't have a proper dump site for, for sewage before the earthquake, um, the actual um, water reticulation system didn't kind of extend to all parts of the city and therefore tankers had to supply water to many parts. That doesn't help. So when you've got such weak infrastructure, then preparedness can only go so far.